This film is brought to you by New York Life and its dedicated agents. Proud sponsors of the NFL's team highlight films. New York Life, the company you keep. In the New York Jets' very first game of the 1980s, Darryl Ray's hard-earned six points set the tone for the entire decade. A ten-year-long roller coaster ride of record breakers and heartbreakers that would leave players and fans breathless. Quarterback Richard Todd set an NFL standard when he completed 42 passes in a single game. In 1980, however, it was standard procedure to waste such efforts, and the Jets lost the game anyway. Although they finished 4-12 and 12 and appeared to be spinning their wheels, the Jets were quietly making a lot of little strides forward. And like Bruce Harper dancing through the defense, the Jets were sneaking up on people and beginning to blow past them. Leighton's overtime field goal that beat playoff-bound Houston taught the Jets a lesson in winning, and the Jets got the chance to put their new knowledge to the test in 1981. Despite an 0-3 start, the Jets were soon dueling with the Dolphins for first place. These fans are on their feet. 21 seconds remaining as Todd is back to pass. He's looking into the end zone. Oh, Jerome Barkham's touchdown earned the Jets instant credibility, and the Jets also won bragging rights to New York with nine sacks in a rout of the Giants. Ironically, the New York sack exchange would come back to help its stunned rivals in Week 16 when the Giants needed a Jets win to make the playoffs. But the Jets were playing for their own first postseason berth since 1969 and hardly needed the extra incentive. The sack exchange tallied nine more as the Jets bombed their way into the playoffs. Back to pass. He is throwing deep for Lamb. He has to the 50. Now we're talking. There is nobody in this ballpark who is seated. They are all standing. They are watching the conclusion of one of the most exciting ball games I have ever seen. The Jets trail 31-27, 10 seconds remaining. The season riding right here, third in the season. Todd looks toward the end zone, a gap him and the ball is intercepted. The season is over. The Buffalo Bills, Bill Simpson, has intercepted at the two-yard line. It's going to end here, and a dejected Richard Todd leaves the field. He nearly pulled the miracle off, nearly pulled his team back from a 24 to nothing deficit. The Jets were young and healed quickly. And in 1982 unveiled a deadly new weapon. Freeman McNeil became the first Jet to lead the NFL in rushing, and he led the Jets right back into the playoffs. Hands it off to McNeil, right side. He throws the option pass. Gaffney alone, touchdown! Touchdown, New York Jets! Talk about a wrinkle! Here's McNeil, right side. Turns inside, the 15, the 10, the 5, he's got a touchdown! Freeman 
McNeil's 202 yards rushing were the second most in playoff history and sent the Jets into Los Angeles for the second round of the Super Bowl tournament. Against the defending world champion Raiders, the Jets did not back down. Raiders withstood the Jets' best shots until the final five fabulous minutes. 4.59 remaining, 14-10 L.A. McNeil, the lone setback. Todd drops back the pass. He's looking deep for Wesley. A step on the defender. He's got it at the two. And rolls it in the end zone. Todd puts it up in the air on a rainbow play. It back to pass. He pops, fires over the middle. Lance Bell intercepts at the 25. Lance Bell comes up with a second interception here in the fourth quarter. The Jets have the ball back. They can run the clock out. The Raiders do not have any timeouts remaining, and the Jets appear on their way to the AFC Championship. In the worst possible conditions for the Jets' offense, it was clear that the AFC Championship would be decided on the other side of the ball. That's right, defense! Defense! Let's go! 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 let us go 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 let us
His 96-yarder to Wesley Walker helped make O'Brien the Jets' first regular season NFL passing champion. Not since 1968 had the Jets' offense been so hard to stop. In week 11, New York bombarded Tampa Bay with a team record 62 points. And the big play offense meant more big games. In week 12, a return to first place hinged on a battle with New England that went into overtime. 33-yard field goal attempt for first place in the AFC East. Here comes the snap. Here comes the kick. It is up. It is good! And the New York Jets are in first place in the AFC East. They have defeated the New England Patriots in overtime, 16-13. The celebration was sweet but short, for the Jets still had to fight their way into the playoffs in the season's final game. Let's go! We won two f***ing hard! 16 weeks of here. Let's kick your ass. Now here's O'Brien, back to pass, looking long. He heaves it down the middle, and it's going to be intercepted. And then grabbed away by Sony, runs into the end zone for the touchdown! Don Rogers had the ball, and then it was ripped away. Unbelievable. Kurt Sohn provided the spark as the Jets shocked Cleveland 37-10 and stole their way back into the playoffs. But for truly grand larceny, no one could top Wesley Walker's great game robbery of 1986. O'Brien back to throw. O'Brien being rushed. O'Brien throwing over the middle. Wesley Walker, touchdown! 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 There is no time remaining! When I made the catch, uh, I was in a dream world. I didn't realize what had happened, and uh, I still don't. I dropped back and waited and waited, and just waited for Wesley to get anywhere near the end zone, and uh, threw it about as hard as I could. And the next thing I knew, Wesley was flying through the air, made a great catch, and rolled in the end zone. As soon as we won the coin toss, I knew we were going to score. Everything was going our way at that point. O'Brien's back to throw. O'Brien throwing long down the sideline for Walker. After that win, the eight straight that followed seemed easy, especially with the emergence of the unanimous all-NFL wide receiver, Al Toon. O'Brien being rushed, O'Brien throwing long down the sideline for Toon in the end zone! Touchdown! the Jets back into the AFC playoffs, where they embarked on another outlandish sequence of postseason palpitations. Walker flanked to the right, tuned to the left. Pat Ryan, the quarterback. Pat Ryan on a quarterback, sneaks down a first down. Jets are going to win this 
football game. The Jets are going to the AFC Championship. For a team that had grown accustomed to snatching unlikely wins itself, letting a 10-point lead slip away in four minutes was too much to face. Then, in the second overtime, the Jets were unceremoniously booted from the playoffs. For the rest of the 1980s, they wouldn't return. The loss left a dark cloud over the Jets, but they played hard through a stormy season. Jojo Tanzel back to his own 10-yard line, running for the far side. He's got some room. Tanzel to the 15, 20, 30, 40. Tanzel is gone. Bingo. Touchdown, Jojo Tanzel. Slowly, the Jets regained their poise, reinvigorated their spirit, and got back on stride. Toon led the AFC in receptions, and by 1988, the Jets had undergone a complete restoration of their pride. Once again, the Jets had the nerve to look anyone in the league dead in the eye. Anyone. In the 1988 season finale, the Giants needed a win to make the playoffs. For the Jets, this was the playoffs. We got 30 more minutes! 30 more minutes of hard work, then we'll close the chapter! Let's go! Marty Lyons led the Jets to eight sacks, but the Giants were still leading by a point in the final minute when Ken O'Brien looked to Mickey Schuler and Al Toon on a desperate drive to victory. O'Brien looking right and left. A pass into the left corner, touchdown! In 1989, the Jets welcomed some new bodies to help fulfill the promise of the season before. But in week three in Miami, it was the familiar form of Al Toon that caught the eye. Ten catch, 159-yard day was a sight to behold, but the Jets' longest score of the day almost went unseen. 42-yard field goal attempt is blocked in the line and is picked up by the New York Jets, running along the left side, and he may go all the way for a touchdown. Along the far sideline, George Ratajkowski picked it up, and he's got a touchdown. Entering the fourth quarter, New York still trailed 30 to 19. And with the Dolphins poised to strike a final blow, it was the Jets who bowled them over. <laughs> New York rolled to the Miami One, where number 79, Mike Haight, cleared the way to the end zone for Johnny Hector. 
Then, Hector added some new moves to his power running and pulled the Jets even. Back to pass, O'Brien throws over the right side. It's caught by Hector. Hector along the right sideline. To the five. Touchdown! The Jets are in again! With three minutes remaining, the pressure was on the Jets' defense to stop Dan Marino. Cornerback James Hasty made quick work of it. Dan Marino goes straight back, rolls out to the left. Looking at the throw on the run, and he does over the left side. Intercepted by the Jets. James Hasty makes the intercept. James Hasty intercepts for the New York. Hasty's second interception of the day broke the Dolphins' resolve. Then, Ken O'Brien and Roger Vick broke their backs. O'Brien back to pass, throws over the left side, and it's touchdown! Caught by Roger Vick for a touchdown for the New York Jets. New York's 21-point fourth quarter comeback seemed to signal smooth sailing ahead. But for the next five weeks, the Jets labored on a long, hard climb up a mountain of bad breaks, interrupted by individual bursts of greatness that always seemed to happen when everyone was watching someone else. Flashing onto the scene was Jojo Townsell, a one-time reserve who became the team's 1989 MVP. After only nine catches in three years, Townsell hauled in 45, averaging 44 yards on his five touchdowns, and became the team's brightest light in a dark stretch of games. Across the line, a second-year safety reappeared with an even more powerful presence than he had shown in his Pro Bowl rookie season. Eric McMillan wreaked havoc on opposing offenses from every conceivable angle. Back to pass as Trudeau out of the shotgun. Intercepted along the left sideline. Here is McMillan along the left side. He may go all the way for a touchdown. He is touchdown. McMillan's instinctive attraction to the ball and his big play sensibility added up to three touchdowns on the season, including an NFL record tying two by fumble recovery. All season long, McMillan razzled, dazzled his way around the sophomore jinx, returning to the Pro Bowl, this time as a starter. Big Craig Hayward. Takes the handoff, goes up the middle, it goes for five yards more. Fumble, loose ball. The Jets have it. Running up field is Eric McMillan. He's ahead of everyone. They'll have to catch him. One man is closing the gap. He's down to the 20-yard line. Touchdown! McMillan's accomplice was his fellow second-year star, James Hasty. Back to pass. Throws out to the left side. Intercepted. Touchdown by Hasty. Hasty along the right side. Goes in and scores. Despite its offensive inclinations, the secondary was hardly a finesse group. Hasty's relentless, in-your-face attitude spread to number 42, John Booty, and the rest of the Jets' defensive backs, who kept the team energized while the offense recharged. In week nine in New England, the electricity was once again in the air. Out wide to the left side. McNeil carries, runs the left, the left tackle, drives along the left sideline, inside the five, touchdown, he goes all the way. O'Brien goes back to pass, fakes a handoff, throws deep down to the left side, way downfield, touchdown! New York built a 12-point fourth-quarter lead on its best two-way play of the season. But victory goes as often to the lucky as to the good. And the Jets had been running a little low on luck. Mark Wilson at quarterback. Dumps back and throws long, way down the middle. It's caught at the 20, to the 10, and 
Touchdown, no! It's a loose ball, rolling free, recovered by the Patriots! The Patriots! What a play! New England took the lead, and even the feistiest Jets let their spirits sag, especially with veteran miracle workers Walker and Toon injured. But the other part of the Jets' comeback connection did not give up. Ken O'Brien looked three times to tight end Keith Newbert and gave Pat Leahy one chance to kick New York back into the win column. Here it is, folks. The ball is snap, place down a kick, and it's... It's good! The New York Jets win it! 27-26! He had delivered all decade long. And Leahy once again proved himself to be the Jets' connoisseur of crunch time. Stars young and old savored the season's sweetest moment, and hope once again flickered in the hearts of the faithful. But as the season wound down, their faith would be tested as rarely before. Though the Jets pushed their bodies to the limit, they never could quite get off the ground. Bad luck snowballed, and New York was buried under an avalanche of injuries. Back to passes, Ryan on first down, fake short, throws down the left side. Toon has it, he's hit hard and got at the 45-yard line. Neither the staunchest veteran nor the freshest rookie was immune. The Jets lost 25 different players who missed a total of 198 games. And while the Jets' all-pro receivers bravely played through pain, multiple injuries began to take their toll even on them. Jets salvaged a pair of wins late in the year and closed out 1989 with the same 4-12 record they had opened up with in 1980. This was a cycle that needed to be broken, and encouraging words and a pat on the back were no longer enough. The Jets needed an infusion of new blood and were gasping for a breath of fresh air. As the 90s begin, a new breeze is blowing in from the Northeast. The New York Jets have selected Dick Steinberg, a weather-tested football man, to take command of football operations. And uh, when you hear that term innovative, you think of throwing the ball all over the lot and not... Uh... To provide new leadership on the field, Steinberg handpicked 43-year-old Bruce Coslett. Okay, defense up. For four years, he drew up the Cincinnati offense. Offense up! And is now ready to help pen a totally new chapter in the history of the Jets. Put your hat on, bub. Put your hat on and button your chin straps. We're playing football now. I'm not there really to talk about past history. It's a breath of fresh air because we want to make history, if we might be so bold to say that. But I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's not going to be easy. I'm not going to uh, kid you. Well, hit it! Uh, the players know that, too. Ha they have to be committed. And I've asked for that commitment uh, already, and uh, the response has been wonderful. Uh, they're tired of losing. A renewed vigor should come from the Jets' defensive front seven, a blend of experience and youth that will be scheming less and attacking more. Number 56, Jeff Lagerman, the Jets' number one draft pick in 1989, was custom built for this style. His fiery intensity and his ability to penetrate into the backfield promised to make him a top flight stand up linebacker. 
the 1990, he'll also be used in certain situations as a fourth down lineman. This alignment will likely enhance the performance of the Jets' talented young defensive linemen, like number 90, Dennis Byrd. The defensive line is characterized by a, a guy like Dennis Byrd. We think right now the defensive line is one of the strengths of our team. Uh, we say this because they're all two and three and four year players. Right at uh, the critical time where they're either going to become players or we'll find out about them otherwise. And uh, we're excited to be working with these people. Bird came into his own with two and a half sacks against San Diego last season. And the development of number 96 Ron Stallworth, Marvin Washington, Gerald Nichols, Paul Fraze, and Scott Mercero helped produce the Jets' back-to-back -back wins over the Chargers and the Falcons. Straight back to pass is Miller rolling out to the left, being rushed hard. He throws it, <laughs> intercepted, a backhanded pass, intercepted by Scott Mercero. Oh, baby, I'll guarantee you that's his first interception. First of all, I want it to be fun. That's my number one thing. But the only way it can be fun is to win. And if you don't win, it's not fun. I don't care what profession you're in. That's good, right there. Having See played eight years of tight end under coming. Paul Brown and don't Bill Walsh, Coslett knows okay? the subtle moves that around, can help a player going. reach his potential. The step. Some of you were coming around the deal like this, waiting on the ball and going like that. Those guys will come inside you and pick it off. That was good. He stepped back. Boom. Just a half a step. That's all it takes. And he knows that the most crucial difference nickel. between we're champions and also rads yeah. is in the mind. Get the players mentally prepared to win. Up, 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 go, 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 get in the ball. Never wait. That's one of the, the keys this year is to establish uh, what it feels like to win and win consistently. That's Brian. A safety playing corner and he covered us like a glove. Way to go, Brian. Damn. That's and good. like I, I said, that. I've asked these players for a commitment. They're going to have to give up okay, Come on, defense. some of themselves to make right the team whole again. I want to see some flying to the ball, guys, flying to the ball. If it's through uh, a process of maybe a little fear thrown in, they might be replaced. If they're not doing the job, I'll do that. And I'm dead serious about that. Uh, I was a player. I know what it's like on the other side of that, that uh, table. It shouldn't take much prodding to get the Jets' offense excited about playing for Coslett, one of football's most dynamic offensive thinkers. Ken O'Brien and number 11 Tony Eason will battle for the starting quarterback job. And the winner should be well cared for, provided the offensive line remains physically intact. Pass catchers Tom Sell, Toon, Schuler, and Chris Burkett should combine with running backs Hector, McNeil, Vic, and A.B. Brown to foster the balanced but explosive attack Coslet envisions on both sides of the ball. Plus special attention to special teams. I can promise the fans that it'll be an exciting brand of football and we'll be an attacking team on offense, defense, and special teams, and I think that's the way you have to play it in today's football. I don't know if we'll win one game or 16 games, but we're going to sure, you know, toss our hat into the ring every week, play hard, see how it comes out.